Hello, my name's Aaron Garner of Emotional Intelligence Academy. And in this video, we want to cover some myths that surround the world of behavior analysis or detecting deception in particular. You've probably come across a few of these myths when you've been reading the books and maybe having a look on the web, uh, doing some searches about lie detection or detecting deception. And in this video, we want to just cover a handful of these just to give a different idea of the actual research that sits behind some of these myths and whether or not there is any truth in these. So let's start having a look at some of these now. So the first myth I want to look at is the concept of gaze aversion or the fact that a liar will avoid eye contact. Now there is no research to back this up. In fact, the opposite seems to be the case. The research suggests that liars will actually hold eye contact more than truth tellers. Now, if you are thinking very hard, even if you're telling the truth or if you're being deceptive, your eyes will move, that's a fact. But if I believe that you think that liars break eye contact, what am I going to do if I am a liar? The first thing I'm going to want to do is make eye contact with you to make sure that you believe me, maybe to check that you're buying the lie, but also because I believe you believe that if I break eye contact, I'm lying. So we have this strange, um, strange problem because of the myth. Because of the myth, uh, it creates this, this opposite uh, reaction. And it does appear that um, it is linked in some way to the concept of our next myth, which is blinking. So blinking, yep, we all do it. We do quite a few blinks every minute of every day. We blink a lot. Now, the theory is around this myth is that when we are lying, we blink more. And again, the research is not the case here. The research does not back this up. So the research suggests that actually, when people in, uh, in experiments are telling the truth, while they're trying to think about the truth, there is an increase in blinks. We do that when we think. When we think, we tend to increase in the amount of blinks that we do. However, when it comes to liars, the research seems to suggest that when people are lying, they blink less, which may be linked to this eye gaze um, concept that we talked about in the last myth, but they seem to blink less. But then that's followed up by an increase in blinks, more than their usual amount of blinks, because they've gone through a period of not blinking. So I will deliver my lie and gaze in the eye. And then when I finish the lie, then I have an increase in my blinking. And that seems to be what the research suggests. And this is held out in a, in a few different studies. Body language. This is one of the biggest, most documented areas when it comes to detecting deception um, in, the, in the public um, section. Now, if you look at the research, it does not match a lot of what you'll find on a lot of articles out there about body language and lying. So for example, um, me not moving while I'm talking to you could indicate that I'm lying or being very stiff in my body language could indicate that I'm lying or um, keeping my hands close to my body, not using my hands in a gestural way. All of these things, in some cases, you'll read some articles and some books, they'll suggest these are linked to lying in some way. The problem with body language is it's so cultural. Now, if you go to certain parts of the world, if you go to the Mediterranean, for example, you'll find huge amounts of gestures. If you go to some other areas of the world, uh, maybe even Britain, the, the, the body language tends to be a lot more reserved. So there's huge differences in the way that people use body language and not just cultural, but individual differences as well. So within each of those cultures, your people will use their body language very, very differently. And you have to take the culture into account and the context into account. If people are feeling threatened, then maybe they will start to um, reduce the amount of physical movements that they use. But that does not mean they're lying. There could be other reasons. Maybe uh, you are the reason for the fact they feel threatened. They're completely truthful, and yet your questions could be affecting their body language. So we have to take all of that into consideration. And unfortunately, there is no body language signal that says that people are lying, that we can use in a universal sense. So 
one area of body language that's mentioned time and time again is this concept of uh, nose scratching or scratching the face or rubbing the hair and time and time again we see this written in articles about lie detection and detecting deception so just to lay this myth down now there is no research to suggest that increase in fidgeting is actually a, a universal signal of somebody lying it is usually a signal of somebody that is anxious and yes liars may be anxious but so can truth tellers anyone here that's been um, involved in public speaking you will feel and you will know that these increase in uh, manipulators happen very very quickly and i use the term manipulators there that is one of the the words that we use to talk about this kind of gesture they're sometimes called self-adapters and those uh, comforters as well as another word you'll see out there they are not indicative of somebody that's being deceptive but they can indicate that somebody uh, is uh, feeling a little bit anxious now it could also be a habit many people do scratching touching and, and hair twirling and those kinds of things when they're um, in their normal day-to-day -day life because that's a habit that they have so we have to take that into account as well so their their normal behavior Okay, so let's think about the, the words that people say. Now, often we come across in, in a lot of books and again in articles on the web that say that when people are stumbling across their words and they're getting muddled up or they're, they're forgetting things or they appear very forgetful or they're correcting themselves in a statement, that this can indicate that there's some kind of deception going on. Actually, the research suggests that when we are remembering something that actually happened so we're remembering an actual memory as we rebuild that memory because that's what we do when we remember something we don't just take a memory from a place in our brain and then deliver it um, perfectly with our mouths we take our memory from different parts of our brain rebuild it and then we communicate the the information about that event and because of this we can make some errors as we do this so we we real rebuild it slightly differently so um, as we're talking we'll we'll be saying one area of a particular event and then we'll go oh no sorry and then we'll correct ourselves this actually shows credibility because that's the way that memories are rebuilt and some of the mistakes that we make we forget things that are in memories and we correct we have to correct ourselves because we we mess things up during the rebuilding process of, uh, of the remembering now if you're a liar that actually happens less because you've rehearsed a lie a lot of the times so if somebody is lying they're less likely to have those kinds of spontaneous corrections and spontaneous forgetful points because it's been rehearsed so if i'm lying then i'm more likely to have a smoother more um, uh, uninterrupted flow as i'm talking to you so that's one area that you have to be very, very careful with. If somebody is bumbling across their speech or forgetting things a little bit like I have at some points during this video, then that this doesn't mean that they're being deceptive. It could just be that they're, they're struggling to rebuild the actual memory, which we do. It depends on when that memory was formed, how long ago this happened, and how many times they've told the story as well. So those were just a few of the myths and we intend to cover a few more myths as we go on with some of these videos and we'll be looking at other topics associated to the analysis of behavior in general. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've got something out of it and I'll see you again soon.